I'd like to welcome Marcella Nearbass today. She's an engineer and let me tell you about her. Marcella Nearbass holds an engineering degree from Lafayette College, a master's of engineering management from Duke University, and she's currently pursuing a master of business administration from Temple University. Marcella's worked for Col Colgate Palmolive for 10 years, and she's involved with the Colgate Women's Network and the Colgate Jumpstart Committee. And externally, she's involved with Women Unlimited. Aside from traveling and sports, Marcella's passions and hobbies include mentoring, interviewing applicants for Duke, reading, eating good food, and dogs. So welcome, Marcella. You have such a well-rounded and impressive background. Thank you for being on with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be part of this. I think the Mentor Project is such a great initiative for uh, people of all ages. Well, we're thrilled to have you as a mentor. Absolutely thrilled. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do at Colgate? Sure. Um, I've had a lot of different roles. I've been very fortunate within Colgate. Um, currently, I am the network operations manager for our Under Arm product um, division. And that essentially is a bit of a roll up of some of the, the uh, roles that I've had over the years. Um, but I work with all the regions that we have in the Colgate world to make sure that our supply chain for underarm products is efficient, um, things are getting where they need to go, and working on any new products that are coming out. So it's pretty interesting. That does sound interesting. So um, did you think that this was what you were going to be doing when you set out to do engineering? Um, no, I mean, I think I've had a, a little bit of a, a different career than most engineers. Um, I, I started out, I declared for engineering when I went to college and you know, I had a little bit of help in trying to figure out when I was declaring for college what I wanted to do. And from everybody I had heard, you know, you kind of have to start as an engineer. So I knew if I had any sort of like little bit of interest in engineering, you really needed to start that from that from the beginning because it's hard to catch up in an engineering program. Uh, so I started and I started as a chemical engineer actually. And I realized pretty quickly it was not what I wanted to do. I loved the topic and I loved learning about it, but I was not someone that wanted to be a technical engineer like designing systems all day. So I Lafayette had a great program. They called it engineering management at the time. I don't know if it's changed. Um, but when I went to Duke, it was an extension of that in the master's program. And that really had more of the business aspect to it and project management. But you still had the technical skills of an engineer. So that's kind of how I got started on this career path of having the engineering background, but not really being a true design engineer. And uh, I, I, I've never looked back. It's been great. I've had so many different experiences that I think I've been afforded because of having the additional skills of, of business. And um, you know, so I, I don't know, I never imagined that I'd be in NetApps or I'd be a, a production planner or a, t or a, a team leader in a, on the production floor. So that's kind of what has happened. And I, I've been very fortunate and very happy to have those experiences. Did you know about engineering management when you were younger before you start set out to become an engineer at Lafayette? No, I actually didn't. And I got just very lucky that Lafayette had that program for engineers because it's not, at least at the time when I was there, it's not at a, it wasn't at every school. So I got, I, that was just luck of the draw, I think. Um, but no, I didn't because everyone talks about chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and civil engineering. Those are the, the four big ones. And then, you know, now you've got so many others. Biomedical is becoming very big. Aerospace engineering, all these, all these other disciplines of engineering. But nobody really talks about uh, the engineering management. And, and every place calls it a little bit different if they have that program. But nobody talks about that. And I think it's such a great program. And I think it really speaks to the fact that with engineering, there are so many opportunities out there 
that it's not, you do not just have to be a design engineer if you don't want to be a design engineer. You can have the skills of an engineer, but do so many different things. The opportunities are really endless with engineering. I just learned something today because I did not know about engineering management. So this yeah. is this is pretty cool. This is completely different. And um, you're the first engineering manager that I've met. So uh, that that does this in a in a bit of a different way. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, and I I will say that a lot of companies, at least the feedback that I've gotten, do like to see that because they know that whoever is they're, whoever they're hiring, they know that they can have, they have those technical skills to be able to analyze data um, and do and understand some of the really complex, complex processes, but they also have the skills to be project managers and work in cross-functional teams, you know, very well and communicate. So, you know, it is a, it is a very good background for someone if they're interested in being in business, but maybe want a little bit of a different background than the traditional business degree. When you were really young, did you did you always know you wanted to be in the field of engineering in this kind of a field when you were a little kid? Um, I would say maybe not me personally. I might I think I got a little bit of help when you know when you're thinking about college and you know just talking to the people that knew me best. They said, well, you know, you might like engineering, you might like this. I think I always was going in that direction of something that had, you know, the, the math and the science field. Um, I think I actually wanted to be maybe a doctor <laughs> at one point. Um, but I think once I found engineering management, that was it. I, I knew that that was, that was my path um, and being in a supply chain somewhere. What's it been like being a woman in the engineering field, going to school for engineering and now working in the field? Yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely, it's no secret that engineering tends to be, and it really depends on where you go and, and certain disciplines within engineering, it, it typically is male dominated. However, I think that is changing. Um, so, you know, that, it, that's always a challenge when there's, always, when there's one major group of people um, and, you know, somebody different comes along. But I, quite honestly, have never really had much of a problem in that area. Um, you know, sometimes I might have been needed to be a little bit more forceful to make sure my voice was heard. Um, but I've never felt uh, that I was treated any differently. And there's so many resources out there now for women. And you mentioned a couple of the ones that I'm involved in in Colgate, just just Colgate is the Colgate Women's Network. So you have the support there. Uh, you have Women Unlimited, which is an external organization for women in business that uh, companies essentially send their employees to. So you network um, with various individuals from other companies. And then, of course, you have the uh, women engineering groups at, at just about every school, I believe, probably has them. So there are so many resources out there that, you know, I think – now, especially, I've never felt, you know, that there was any issue. But like I said, you know, you have to, every, every time you go to a, a meeting, you always want your voice to be heard. So, you know, you need to be, you need to speak up, uh, especially as a woman, because you have maybe a different perspective on things. And, um, you know, as long as you're doing that, then I think a, a female can be successful in engineering. That's good advice, uh, letting your voice be heard. And um, on that note, I'd like to ask you, do you have any recommendations uh, for the next generation, boys and girls, um, above and beyond having your voice heard for pursuing a field in engineering? Definitely. Uh, I think that first and foremost, it seems to be that I've moved around quite a bit. I've had so many roles in Colgate and the only way that that was possible for me to get that experience and to progress as quickly as I have in my career was to be open to moving around. And that can be challenging. I know, especially for a lot of early in career individuals, but doing that at a time in your life where you have that flexibility is so critical. And that's what will allow you to gain the skills very quickly to move and progress 
within an organization. Um, I've lived in so many different states. I did a rotational program when I first graduated uh, after grad school, um, when I first started with Colgate. That was my first year of work, was in a rotational program. And I moved around three times in a year. But those skills, you can't develop those in any other way. So, and there will come a point in time when you're not as flexible to moving around, whether you've entered, you know, a, a program like an MBA program as a part-time student, or you have a family, um, or just, you know, you don't feel like moving, you just want to be settled. So, doing that as early as possible um, is, is a huge help, because today's companies, that seems to be the trend. You know, if you look at manufacturing, those plants and the supply chain, they're, they're spread out. And so you need to have those experiences if, if you're looking to have a, a career in supply chain um, uh, companies. Now, the other thing I would say is exactly what we're talking about right now is mentoring. Everyone needs to have a mentor. It's so critical because there are doors that as an early in career or really at any stage of your career, you can't open. Someone needs to help you open those and they may just have to do it for you. Um, and not only having a mentor above you, but it's also really important to have someone who is maybe junior to you by a few years. And that's something I've gotten really involved in is creating a reverse mentoring program at Colgate because having a different perspective from someone who's, who is more junior to you, they may understand new workplace trends or be able to help you figure out new things, but they'll look at it very differently than someone who is more senior to you, a situation. Um, so having various types of mentors is really critical um, to, to a career. So those are the two things I, I would recommend. That's amazing advice. And I'm so glad you, you included mentoring um, because you are one of our mentors and I'm so excited that kids are gonna have an opportunity and adults to ask you questions online. And um, I, of course I agree with you, mentoring is very important. And I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this podcast today and for being a part of the mentor project. Thank you so much. I look forward to, you know, anyone who would like to reach out to me, feel free. I'm happy to uh, respond to you in any way I can. Thanks so much. Thanks, Deborah.